Uh, hi students. So after the completion of miscellaneous, miscellaneous instruments part one, wherein we discussed the concepts of uh, frequency meters. Let us now discuss the concepts of uh, power factor meter and synchroscope. So let us begin. Now taking the discussion further. Now let us foray into the next uh, miscellaneous instrument which is nothing but power factor meter now power factor is also a very important quantity to be measured because order of power factor tells us what is the order of disparity between the active power as well as the apparent power in the system because we know through power triangle that apparent power is the total amount of power which we supply to the system whereas active power is the order of useful power which we use to do which we which is basically utilized for doing useful work whereas reactive power is wattless power it is basically used for uh, establishing magnetic field or electrostatic field depending upon the type of component which is being connected whether it is inductor or capacitor so uh, we have to ensure that the disparity between these two powers is uh, apparent and as well as active power is as minimum as possible which indicates that the operating power factor should always be unity now if at all operating part is not unity power factor is not unity then how much is it that is to be measured and therein we have two conditions wherein either the power factor could be lagging or leading lagging is indicated by the presence of an inductive load in the system whereas leading is indicated by the presence of a capacitive load in the system now the electrodynamo meter type uh, power factor meter consists of fixed coil as well as moving coil the moving coil is again split into two parts a and b whereas fixed coil is considered in two parts which is f1 and f2 now what do we have we have uh, the moving coils connected as pressure coils because they are connected across the source supply or else across the load whereas the fixed coil is connected in series so they act as the current coil so uh, fixed coil is actuated by the order of current which is flowing through the load whereas moving coil is actuated by the order of current which which is corresponding to the order of voltage which is appearing across the supply or else across the load so the system is that uh, the fix uh, the moving coils are connected uh, the two moving coils are having one one moving coil is having a resistance non-inactive highly non-inactive resistance connected in series with it whereas the other one is having a highly non-inactive uh, inductance which is connected in series with it now under normal conditions at 50 hertz frequency we always ensure that the value of r is always equivalent to the inductive reactance xl so the order of current flowing through a and b is always same now if value of current is same then definitely the actuating quantities and the mutual inductance between the two coils which is fixed coil as well as the moving coil would depend upon the quarter of current which is flowing through them and the phase difference which is existing between them now that that phase difference between voltage and current is dependent upon the type of load and that is what we are going to measure because that is nothing but the overall power factor of the system so now what we are doing is we are uh, trying to find out what is the relationship between this current so for that what we can do is we can consider a free body diagram wherein this is the fixed coil sorry this is the moving coil and this is the axis of for flux generation of fixed coil so one fixed coil would be here one fixed coil would be here now considering the fact that this is one of the positions at which the pointer is right now there so with respect to the center condition which is con which is showing the normal or unity power factor the angle of motion is theta so this much angle would be 90 minus theta but obvious this is coil a this is coil b now considering this we can very well say that there are two torques which are present now in the system because the order of current flowing through the coils is i which is uh, i uh, which is corresponding to the order of applied voltage v and there is another actual quantity which is i current i which is now flowing through the fixed coils so current i capital i flows through fixed coils whereas current corresponding to the applied voltage v flows through the moving coils so the overall torque which is produced on coil a is basically a function of the applied voltage and the current which is flowing through it as well as the order of current which is flowing through the fixed coils which is basically producing the flux so it is basically uh, given by it is proportional to v applied voltage current flowing through the fixed coil the maximum mutual inductance which is established between fixed coil and moving coil cos of phi cos of phi is nothing but the power factor 
and uh, the uh, angle between the two actuating quantities uh, which is in the case of coil A I can take it as 90 minus theta y because current direction and flux direction would be this I can assume so this is nothing but the overall motion so I can say that this is 90 minus theta so this is the resolution between the uh, this is the way in which the vectors can be resolved so accordingly it will be 90 minus theta now one thing which we need to understand here is that k here is nothing but the overall uh, constant meter constant and this basically equation follows the overall uh, electrodynamometer type instrument uh, deflection equation only wherein this is i this is i this is cos of i which was which which is which was earlier also which is quite uh, known to all of us so torque a can now be reduced as v k into v into i into m max into cos of i into sin theta where k is nothing but constant of the instrument v is the applied voltage i is the load current and m max is the maximum value of mutual inductance between two coils which is fixed and moving similarly if this is torque a then we can say that torque b could be established by the equations k into v into i m max into sin of phi into cos of theta so at equilibrium position when the point is at rest it means that the torque produced by a and torque produced by b is same and that is what we have seen also because uh, that is quite indicative of the fact that the current flowing through both of them is same so flux is more or less same so torque on both of them is same so they are and they are orthogonal with respect to each other so that is the case the pointer would remain at steady state condition so ta is nothing but equivalent to tb if that is the case then all these quantities which are nothing but common k into v into i into m max they are, are being cancelled out so we can say that cos phi into sin theta is nothing but sin phi into cos theta which means tan theta is equal to tan phi which means theta is equal to phi now this is a very important equation why because this shows us that the order of movement in terms of deflection is nothing but the order of phase uh, phase displacement or else displacement angle between voltage and current and that is nothing but and cos of that displacement voltage uh, displacement uh, is nothing but cos function of the displacement angle is nothing but power factor so theta is equal to phi that is the way in which the overall uh, scale of this particular uh, instrument is being calibrated now the last and final uh, set of uh, uh, instrument which we we are going to discuss is synchroscope we are going to discuss two types of synchroscopes one is the conventional one the, the other one is electrodynamometer one so the first one which we are going to discuss here is the conventional one now before going into synchroscope we need to understand that why synchroscope is required now if understand if, if we know from the theory of transformers that whenever we want to connect two transformers in series there are few conditions which have to be matched S uh, one of them is that the reactances x by r ratio should be matched uh, the phases phase difference should be zero so they have to have e they have to be in phase or else there will be circulating current the same thing applies whenever we want to basically join two sources together or else we want to join two alternating sources in parallel because we don't want any amount of current flowing between the sources we want it to flow only through the load so if at all we have two sources we have two sources as ryb this is the uh, one feeder and there is an incoming feeder ryb which is basically connected in parallel so as to ensure that the load is being met with the demand of load current is being met with so uh, that is normally uh, this practice is normally followed in the case of power system in the case of uh, power stations wherein we have multiple generators and these multiple generators cannot be just connected with the grid straight away so you have to first ensure that they are in synchronism with the overall feeders with the overall phases of the system their amplitudes are matching their frequencies matching their uh, instantaneous values are matching and accordingly only they can that to phase to phase line to line accordingly only they can be put into the system or else there would be huge circulating current which might lead to damage of any one of the generators which whose potential difference at that point in time is less so so as to ensure that the synchronism is obtained and then only the uh, systems are connected in parallel an instrument is used which is basically known as a synchroscope now uh, this is this shows a very simple form of a synchroscope wherein we have a three limb transformer in which on the outer limbs we are connecting two phases of or two lines i would say i should say of the feeders one is the incoming feeder one is the existing feeder which are supposed to be connected in parallel 
and we are taking the same phase sequence to ensure that whether the phase sequence is really matching or not. Now what would happen is that when we are taking YB and YB here, if the phase sequence matches, the so flux which is produced by this particular coil would be like this and flux which would be produced by this particular coil would be in this way. Now if the phase sequence are matching then what would happen the addition of these two fluxes would lead to higher flux linkage in this particular coil that would lead to higher EMF being induced and that higher induced EMF would lead to what higher voltage across the filament of this particular lamp leading to a very bright glow. So the maximum glow of this particular lamp would indicate a fact that the fluxes are adding and uh, they are at the maximum value that can only be possible if both of them are in sync they are in same phase if at all there is some phase difference let us say a small angle also then what would happen the overall flux which is produced here would become less accordingly the induced emf value would be less which will lead to a lower glow in this if they are completely out of phase then net flux because one would generate the flux in this way the other one would generate the flux in this way so one is anti-clockwise the other one is clockwise so overall flux in this particular central limb would become zero which would lead to a fact of no emf which is induced here which would lead to no emf across the filament of the lamp and no glow so no glow in the lamp indicates that both the sources are out of phase whereas brightest glow in the lamp which indicate that they are completely in phase and if at all one is faster the other is so slower which would indicate that there is a phase difference this lamp would undergo some flicker because there would be some rate of change which is not exactly 50 hertz it would be somewhere lesser than 50 hertz which will lead to some flicker in the lamp which would be indicative of the fact that one of them is faster the other one is slower but which one is faster which one is slower that won't be known to us so this is a conventional synchroscope which is basically uh, indicated and explained here now another uh, variation of this particular electron anemometer type synchroscope is nothing but uh, uh, is, is nothing but electron anemometer type synchroscope now in this case what do we have is we have two fixed coils and one moving coil exactly what we have in the case of an electron anemometer type instrument wherein the fixed coils are connected in series but they are connected in series in such a way that they are connected across the two phases of the in of the existing line so across y and b through the bus bars they are connected so fixed coil is connected and that is connected with a very high non-inductive resistance l as our high inductance l in the system so our highly non-inductive resistance r is connected in series with a high inductive inductors inductor l in the fix with the fixed coil and it is connected across the two line tool phases similarly across those two phases only are uh, y and b we are connecting the moving coil wherein one is straight away connected here the other one is connected through a capacitor to the line now the the sink uh, the the xl and xc is chosen in such a way that their values of current would be uh, different now if at all both of them are at the same frequency then the values of xl and xc would be such that the order of current between both of them would be same so accordingly the torque which is induced on this moving coil would be zero so accordingly it would show the frequency as zero now if at all uh, frequency uh, difference as zero which means that they are at normal frequency as the same frequency but if one of them is at a higher frequency let us say then what would happen is that xl or else xc would have some difference that would lead to what a difference in the order of current that order of current would basically ensure that either the fixed coil flux or else the moving coil flux is dominant which would ensure that the pointer would move in a direction which would be indicative of the uh, frequency actual frequency of the system which would also show that which is faster because if fixed coil is mo more then this would try to move this way if the moving coil is more it would always try to align itself in the other direction so by the motion of the pointer would come to know which one is faster whether the incoming feeder and its phase and, and its line and its alternating quantities are at uh, uh, oscillating at a higher rate or else is it's the existing phaser and existing bus bar and its alternating quantities which are uh, rotating at a or which are which are alternating at a higher rate so accordingly uh, basic uh, accordingly we can take a call that which one is 
faster and then we can take corrective actions and ac and once the pointer indicates the center condition which indicates that the frequency change the difference in frequency for both the sources is zero and the order of current flowing through both the coils is more or less same so torque is also zero we can s operate the synchronizing switch wherein we can operate both the systems in parallel so i uh, and uh, this is what the phaser would also indicate so once the uh, uh, once the voltage is because there would be some voltage v1 and v2 which would be applied across the two fixed coils and moving coils uh, across both fixed coil as well as moving coil and which would lead to a current i1 and i2 now because of the fact that the inductor and capacitor is always connected with uh, fixed coil and moving coil respectively the currents i1 and i2 would always be in quadrature or else they would be always perpendicular with respect to each other for any given value of voltage which is applied so the phase difference would be applied in terms of voltage and not in terms of current current phase difference would always be fixed whereas the phase difference between the two voltages would be the one which is going to be observed so if both of them are in synchronism then the phase difference between both the voltages will become zero accordingly the torque is zero so the pointer is there at the position of rest at the center most value which indicates that the normal frequency is there normal synchronism is obtained so synchronism is obtained but when they are out of phase let us say so the phase difference between the applied voltage for both the fixed coil as well as moving coil would be completely 180 degrees with respect to each other even if the currents are 90 degrees with respect to each other so as to ensure that the pointer would try to or try to move in a direction wherein the flux is more dominant which would lead to the fact that uh, which will lead to an indication that which uh, input is oscillating at a higher frequency or else moving at a higher frequency so this would basically lead to two scenarios which can be discussed through this phaser diagram so this indicates the fact that i1 and i2 are in quadrature but if both the phases and voltages are in phase so they line in the same phase but if they are out of phase with respect to each other then even if the both currents are in quadrature there is some angle between the voltage and current which is shown here but the two voltages are completely 180 degree with, with respect to each other uh, for any doubts regarding the videos kindly uh, upload your comments in the comment section below hope you like the videos uh, and for more videos in the future, uh, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get updated.